Hello, my name is Lindsay Drake and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am on staff here at Collegiate Wesley and I am so grateful for this opportunity to be worshiping digitally with, with you this week. Starting next week, we are gonna be welcoming people back into our sanctuary for worship. We're gonna have two in-person worship opportunities at nine and 11. And while we are starting to worship more in person, we are going to continue to have our digital worship service each and every Sunday that will premiere at eight o'clock in the morning before our in-person opportunities. We are so grateful that we get to worship with you here in Ames, across Iowa, across the country. It is such a joy to connect with you. Each and every week, we also take this opportunity to fill out our digital connection cards. This is how we stay connected throughout the week. Your digital connection cards can be found on our digital worship page on our website. For those of you watching on Facebook, you'll find a link in the comment section to our digital connection card. While you're filling out your connection card, there's an opportunity for you to fill out any prayer requests that you may have. There's also an opportunity on our digital worship page at the bottom for you to give. We appreciate the ways that you have continued to support the incredible ministries here at Collegiate Wesley. So thanks for being a part of this digital community. We look forward to worshiping with you each and every week. So let's take a moment to fill out our digital connection cards, to share any prayer requests that we might have, to give, and to check in in the comments section. Hi, World Changers. My name is Lauren Loonsfoot. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries for Collegiate Wesley, and I am so thankful to be worshiping with you today. Today is Communion Sunday. Communion Sunday is a really great time to be able to remember the most important thing, and that is that God loves you. God loves you no matter what, and how awesome is that to have the love of God all the time? On Communion Sunday, it's a way for us to remember the love and sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus is a way for us to show others love into the world. Jesus taught us how to treat one another, taught us lessons on how to live a peaceful life. So on Communion Sunday, we remember Jesus and we remember the lessons that he taught us. We remember to love one another and to be into community with one another. It's a time for celebration. So thank you for being here with us on this Communion Sunday. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week.
Jane Jacobson. This week's gospel reading is from Mark chapter 6 verses 1 through 3. I will be reading from the Common English Bible Translation. Hear now these words. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown. His disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were surprised. Where did this man get all this? What's this wisdom he's been given? What about the powerful acts accomplished through him? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't he Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? They were repulsed by him and fell into sin. Jesus said to them, prophets are honored everywhere except in their own hometowns, among their relatives, and in their own households. He was unable to do any miracles there, except that he placed his hands on a few sick people among their and healed them. He was appalled by their disbelief. Then Jesus traveled through the surrounding villages teaching. He called for the 12 and sent them out in pairs. He gave them authority over unclean spirits, He instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick, no bread, no bags, no money in their belts. He told them to wear sandals, but not to put on two shirts. He said, whatever house you enter, remain there until you leave that place. If a place doesn't welcome you or listen to you as you leave, shake the dust off your feet as a witness against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should change their hearts and lives. They cast out many demons and they anointed many sick people with olive oil and healed them. Thus ends the reading of today's gospel. Thanks be to God. weeks ago, my husband Steve and I took a trip out to South Dakota to do some hiking in the Black Hills. We went to this favorite spot of ours, Deerfield Lake, which sits at 6,000 feet and then there's a 12 mile walk um, around the lake. It's rigorous and we always take our hiking poles with us. I don't know if you've ever used hiking poles, but they're basically used for two things. They're used to help people keep their balance, and then they're also used to help carry the load. As we took this 12 mile hike around Deerfield Lake, of course we took knapsacks with us and we took a lot of water because it was a very warm day. And then of course we took our first aid kit and some snacks. And so our packs were really rather heavy as we took that walk and we used those poles to help us make our way along the trail. I have a hiking pole that is more like what Jesus referred to as a staff that people would have used in his time in the first century. It looks like this. Uh, A friend of mine in a church I served made that for me. It actually has my name on it, Mary, like this. And people in Jesus' time would have carried such staffs just to help them walk because back then that was the major mode of transportation. 
And of course, shepherds also used staffs. Their staffs tended to be a little taller, sometimes had a crook on them, and they would help uh, move the sheep along using the, the staff. They would nudge the sheep here, then nudge the sheep there. So when Jesus comes to Nazareth, and sends out his disciples, as we heard in this morning's scripture, it's really interesting to me that he tells them, take nothing with you except your staff. Take nothing with you except your staff. When I think about that commandment to us today, I think we might be thinking about what is it that helps us carry the emotional load, the psychological load, in addition to the physical loads of our lives. As we go out into the world in our walk of faith, what is the staff that we're carrying that helps us proclaim God's love for all people? It might be important for us to wonder about that because in this text from the Gospel of Mark, it is the only thing that Jesus tells us to take. It is the most crucial thing, the important thing, the staff that helps us carry the load, that keeps us balanced, the staff that maybe helps us nudge ourselves or others along uh, whom we are commanded to protect. When I was thinking about this, it also reminded me of the times when I have moved or cleared things out uh, I know that we're getting ready in Ames here for the rummage rumble. And you think about all the stuff that people are letting go of or gathering up. And in my own experience of moving, it is almost emotional, all this sorting through uh, and deciding what to keep and what to let go of. Human beings get attached to things. Um, I can remember when I sold my house in Urbandale, and I was taking things to goodwill, um, giving things away, deciding what I was going to toss and what I uh, was going to keep. It was really a very emotional process for me. As the days, though, grew closer uh, to when I really had to be done, that whole process started to move a lot faster. Whereas when I started, I was like, picking everything up and looking at it and thinking about the memories that came and the feelings I had. Uh, by the last, when I was near the end, I was just throwing things into boxes, tossing stuff into bags. No, I don't need that. No, I won't use that again. No, nobody wants that. And sometimes I found in this process, it kind of helps to have another person with you who has no emotional attachment to this stuff, who can really help you do that kind of tossing um, without all of the time and emotion of sorting through and thinking about it. So back to what Jesus had to say to us. Jesus tells us, when you go forward in your life, to be the healing presence and the helping presence that I am asking you to be, let go, let go of the stuff that weighs you down or may divide your energies or the things that you do not need or the things that make you move less nimbly in the world. His commandment here asks us to consider over and over what is it? What is it exactly that we are attached to? What do we need? What do we need to let go of? It might help us to think about how Mark sets up this sending of his disciples. Jesus, of course, has returned to Nazareth. And in Jesus' time, Nazareth would have been like a little town of three or four hundred people. Think Podunk, Iowa. That was kind of Nazareth. Everybody would have known everyone else. And this is the case in small towns and was the case at, in the culture at that time. Status was something that certain people and families had and everybody knew who had what status. So when Jesus comes back as a healer and a prophet to his hometown, people were like in complete disbelief. Isn't this Mary's boy, they said? Isn't this like the carpenter, the carpenter's son? 
And then to respond to all of this, Jesus is purported as saying, a prophet is without honor in his hometown. This is important too that he says that because first of all, Jesus is self-identifying to these people who have known him, of course, all of his life. He is self-identifying not as Mary's boy, not as the carpenter, but as a prophet. He is claiming something for himself. And this should be a lesson to us in many ways. But in today's world, I would say that it really gives affirmation to people who are naming and claiming their identity, even when the world around them doesn't like it or accept it. Here we have Jesus doing this claiming, uh, whatever you have believed about me, he says, this is the truth. I am a prophet in the tradition of the great prophets. Really, you see, Jesus was letting go of all those attachments to how other people thought about him. And Jesus was picking up his own staff, that is, what was going to support him and carry him through his ministry in his identity as a prophet and beloved of God. In the time of Jesus, you see, honor was a commodity. Some people had it and other people didn't. That's how it worked. When Jesus goes ahead and claims honor for himself as a prophet, when he picks up that staff, he radically rearranges these notions of honor not by the world's ways, not by our ego, but by basic worth. That is what Jesus was saying. I claim for myself the honor of the prophet because I have received that call from God and you will not decide for me. I will be deciding in my relationship with God. We are being invited to do the same. We see the authority of ourselves and others in a new way. People tell their own stories. We don't tell them for them. We tell our own stories and claim our identity as God's beloved. And this all sets the stage, you see, for Jesus to send out his disciples, to send us out, to send you and me out. Um, when Jesus tells us, take nothing with you, what he means is do not take the way of measuring people or yourself by the world's way of doing that. Do not depend on things that are temporary or partial. Take only the staff, that which will help you carry the burden of love. Take that, and as you walk through the world carrying the load of love, God will help you. God will perform miracles of healing through your very life. God will give you people to befriend you and love you back. God will give you the hope and resilience that you need to sustain your walk. I think that we need the staff, whatever and whoever that is in your life because the way is not always easy. It is not always easy to live lives of faith and love. Sometimes our staff is a person. I am reminded of this story of a little girl who was awakened in the night by a terrible thunderstorm. And this little three-year-old was, was scared by that crack of thunder and, and she went flying into her parents' bedroom. And the mother who was half awake tried to comfort the little girl. Go back to your room, she said. God will be with you there. And the little small figure stood motionless in the doorway for a moment. And then she responded softly, Mommy, I'll sleep in here with Daddy. You go in there and sleep with God. Sometimes our staff is a person. It isn't just something in our minds. It's the person or thing that helps you with the journey, who keeps you connected to real relationships and the real experience of love, comfort, 
safety, and hope. For we who have encountered Christ, it is also the person of Jesus who goes with us. I am with you always, said Jesus, even until the end of the age. I read recently that scientists estimate the universe at 12 billion years old, and they think that it might uh, exist in its present state another 300 to 400 billion years. I am with you, says Jesus, even more than that. I am with you beyond this age into God's eternal age. So take nothing with you but a staff, that which helps you carry the load. Trust the people who show up for you and for the ways that you will be showing up for others. I am with you, says Jesus, even until the end of the age. May Christ, who shimmers in all creation, surprise you each day with glittering moments. When you can see again how light lives in everything, how it partners with dark soil to bring forth aster and lavender, rosemary and daffodils, a hundred kinds of squash, Let's take a minute now. Let's take a minute to remember and how on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, the night that his body was given over to the authorities, how on that night before his final trauma, he gathered his friends, he gathered his loved ones around a table. And on that night, Jesus took bread and he broke the bread and he gave it to his friends. And he said, take, eat, all of you. Whenever you eat this bread, remember me. And after they had eaten, so Jesus took the cup and he poured it out. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant that is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin and the life everlasting. Every time you drink this cup, remember me. And so we give thanks as we remember how we are the body of, re of Christ redeemed by his blood, how our bodies are restored through the communion which we take in the communion of so great a cloud of witnesses, all of us, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So now let's take the bread. This is the body of Christ, which is given for you. And this is the cup of the new covenant which has been poured out for you. Let's take this together.
Let us pray. Gracious and abiding one, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. And now let us pray together the great prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, may we always walk gently upon the earth in right relationship as we are now nurtured by each other in this community of faith. Help us make choices every day that bring well-being for our families, for our neighbors, for our friends, and for the world around us. Let us live in generosity and strive for justice. And this morning we lift up those whom we name in the privacy of our minds who are standing in need of prayer. We lift them up to you and we lift up ourselves as well. We ask that you be with us, that you comfort us, that you create in us hearts given to love and mercy, hope and justice. May we be comforted and held by your presence. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, may you go with the love of God to walk in the way of Jesus, ever uplifted and sustained by the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen.